I tell you, I get myself all worked up for y'all. We got to somewhat perspire profusely, but that's all right. If he grants me the liberty to do it in the corn field or the bean field, certainly in the bait of Yah, the house of refuge, and that's what the bait is. It is a place of refuge. We can find the solidarity of strength by the power of the Ruach, the relation of people that we operate in one accord, by one discipline of the Ruach HaKodesh, According to the Sava, the instructions of commands by the mandate of Yah, that we obey Him in all the disciplines according to the Torah. What a great blessing it is. What a tremendous blessing to gather on the Shabbat. And He opens up by the revelation of His Son, Yoshua HaMashiach, the power of Torah. The power of that living Torah that dwells in the bosom of Yisrael. It is not something that is spoken, but it is a life that when one speaks, when one speaks, it emanates the power of life. And that's what David instructs us to mark an oath, to put a seal upon the man that is Tomim, that is perfect in the order of Yah. He has a beautiful Ruach. His spirit is beautiful. It tells us to mark a perfect and a man that is Yosha, that is upright. A man that his disciplines are right. A man that his beauty exemplified the walk of Torah. Very few found today. He says, and you will know that that's a man of great discipline and honor. Because the end of that man is Shalom, Shalim. What is that implying, man? It implies this. When you deal with a man of great beauty and great strength, when you leave the presence of that man, when you enter into the presence of that man, when you listen to the dialogue of that man, when you listen to the wisdom of that man, as you go in, as you leave out, you will leave with one sure thing of satisfaction and there will be a Shalom Brit ha, the covenant of Shalom is refurbished and that covenant of Shalom Shalom it restores us unto the beauty of the Rafa the Mape the Arukha of Yah the health of our minds the health of our bodies the health of our Ruach that's what it does and that's why I say all the time, I long for the wise elderly men. I find a pack of fools, is what I find. I don't find all the men that are wise and the discipline is pure. They're simpletons and silly and they're full of folly. That does not negate the elderly women as well. They're full of geluch. You figured that one out. Full of folly juvenile intrigue but they have not the strength of Yah's beauty i said to the akhin the other day as we were sitting at the table we greet you all that have joined us i'm going to speak for a few moments in our zakhin yaramaya our leader our messenger our teacher our skilled practitioner of torah shall teach us today i said to the akhin the other day as we were sitting and talking I said, it is amazing that we as a nation of people and the people we will call heathens or as Zephaniah, Zephaniah called them, I'm sorry, Nehemiah, as he began to build and restore the walls of Yerushalayim. He called them mortals, men that have no strength and women that have no beauty of the Torah of Yah. But it was one thing that all the people had in common. They were willing. The word willing is hafiz. It is a great pleasure. It's a great desire. It is a great passion. They had a willing heart to work. To work hard. To work hard. And with, within a span of 52 days, the walls 
were restored. Not the gates, but the walls. And the reason why? Because there was a willingness. There was a pleasure. There was a great delight to labor for Yah. To work hard. This is a stupid generation. I will not stop saying that. That's why when one finds a man that sigh and cry against the wickedness that begins in his own heart, then one takes great delight in the measure, the strength, the maturity of that man. Because he knows that that man has labored with great intensity to reach or to climax to the stature, the place that one is, that his words have great strength. We don't have to talk and we can talk, Yisrael. We are a Sugula people. We are a Sugula. We are a beautiful people. The beauty cannot be expressed by mere mortals. They look, but they don't understand. It's not by some flashy attire that one wears. That speaks to the volume and the beauty of the nation of Yisrael. And people don't understand what they are perceiving. And their perception of one of the nation. They have no concept as to that people, the nation, who they are and what they are. And as I said the other day that we as a nation of people... We are the people that will not confront the issues that we face head on. They go to Alcohol Anonymous and they talk about the ills. Their social groupings is to talk about what has handicapped them all their lives. They go to Gamblers Anonymous and Drug Anonymous. And they talk about the things that defeat them constantly. But an irreligious, a religious people, a superficial people, we will not talk about the impediments of our own lives. And the things that cause us not to act in the power of Yah's great sufficiency. Of this living Torah that dwells within our bosom. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to deal with those ills. Yet people in their social gatherings, their environments. They don't go to sports clubs to talk about religion. They do not attend some kind of gathering to talk about those things that are not... Uh, pertinent to what they are there for and we are a nation of people we don't want to talk about the ills we don't want to confront our own ills but we have the superficiality to confront the ills of others that we perceive we don't want to deal with our own ills we don't want to gather like those in alcohol anonymous and they tell of their deficiencies and their faults. We don't want to confess our faults. We don't want to confess our sins. Because of our own arrogance and our pride and our stupidity and our ignorance. But yet even the world knows how that grants strength and beauty to one's life. We don't want to deal with that Yisrael. We have... Eclipse the correction of Yah and our own corrupt mindset. And so you don't find men today, they're juvenile and weak. And the same thing with the women as well, Yisrael. That is wrong. It's not right. And every time that Yah will correct this nation, they will say, Where have we sinned? Where have we been so horrible? We don't want to deal with the horrible state of our own minds and our own uh, construct. We don't want to deal with that. We don't want to confront the ills that are destroying us. We don't want to do that. We don't want to deal with those things that are dismantling any power or prominency of Torah in our minds. 
And so the old men are foolish and weak today. The elderly women are, are foolish and weak. They love folly. I, I'm not concerned if people don't love me. They don't even love themselves. There is no way that you can be kind to anyone when you're not kind to yourself. If you're not kind to yourself, you can't be kind to anyone. If there is no great love, and you will know you love, because we know that whom Yah loves and whom he receives, he corrects. And we do not have the ability to correct ourselves. Uh, we are a dismal people. We don't have the ability to correct ourselves. Because our minds will not speak unto us the living power of this testimony. We have perceived Yeshua is some kind of false uh, figment of our imagination. And that's not so, Yisra'ya. He is the power of Torah. And when one has that living Torah in them, they have a life that operates in the strength of that witness when one sees that in the Ak, in the Akhot. And it causes them to rejoice greatly. And cause their hearts to be filled with excitement. The minute that I've been among the nation of Yisrael, yeah, but they were never of them. Never. When a man gets 50, 60, 70 years old, he still operates in his juvenile nature as a sick individual. We're sick. And don't even know he's sick. I want to read a few verses before our Zakin comes. I was talking with Ach Mikaya, our precious Zakh. The other day, and I said to him, as I search Torah and to seek out the simple elements and the nuggets of truth, it was one word that bared a great impression upon my heart the other day, and it was the word Yedi. I like the Aramaic, the Hebraic sounds of the words. Because to me it brings a more vivid, lively, or life construct to my bosom. And I said to Ak Mikaya, because Yah spoke these words. I said, as I was looking at Torah the other night, and the word Yidi, as one writes unto his precious favored one, that his heart was so overcharged with great concern. When one says, Beloved, O Yedi, what is talking about the covenant of shalom that brings health and that brings the healing, the mape of Yah, that restores one to the arukha, the soundness of mind and the soundness of discipline of Yah. And one cause one to understand that there is a covenant, there's a Brit, there's a bond, there's an allegiance of shalom with that one. So when one says Yidi, one is saying that this is beyond Ahava, this is beyond love. When one says Yidi, it is a special place in their hearts because they are beloved. Yah calls us his beloved. Very few places in the old covenant whereby the word Yidi is used. I search, I've looked. And when the word Yidi is used, it has a profound ramification. It deals with a special place in one's heart. It deals with a special mature love. It is a love of construct. It is a love of that have uh, condiments of tenderness and kindness, concern. When there is no Yidi or no Ahava, we're not concerned about the welfare of the nation of Yisrael. And we show that in how we are concerned with ourselves. How we deal with myself. How we act. Is it accordingly to Torah? Do we refresh our minds daily in the Torah of Yah? Do we constantly bathe ourselves in the living water 
of this Torah? Or do we have time for everything but Torah? Give me a moment, Zaki. I want to read a very beautiful letter that was written to one. By the name of Geisha. And the beloved of Yisraya. I just want to read one verse and quote a few scriptures that associated with that writing. And it comes from the writing of Yakahanan. It comes from 3 John. 3 John chapter 1 and verse 2. He addresses him and the congregation of life by the word Yidi, my beloved. You're special to me. You have a special place in my bosom. You're constantly on my mind. When someone is beloved, it's like a parent beloving their child. And the child always finds a prominent place through their thought throughout the day. Is it that the Torah of Yah, the word of Yah is your sure? Does he find a permanent place in our walk or in our construct? He calls him beloved, Yidi, a special love, special kindness. One that is beloved, one that my heart pants after, loves greatly. He said, beloved, he uses the word, I know our concept of the word wish. He said, I wish. My great pleasure, my chafetz, my desire, my compassion, my passion for you. He said, I wish. My heart longs. My desire is encapsulated in your wellness, in your strength. He said, I wish a chafetz with great delight and great pleasure. He said, that's it's what I have pleasure in. That's my motive. He said, I wish above all things, above all things that I encounter or you, the unrealistic approach of life uh, and the reproach of life. He said, I wish above all things uh, that you may shulach, that you may prosper. We must understand how the shulach or the prospering as we advance, as we proceed from the place we were yesterday or the day before, to the most excellent place of Yah in your shoe, there's a way to that process. He said, my heart above all things, above great riches, above wealth, is that you may shulach, that you may advance in the wisdom of Yah, the understanding, the knowledge of Torah, that you may be wise, that you may, my friend, that you may prosper, that your way may be profitable, your speech may profit. You may proceed, and even the words that you speak, uh, that you may prosper. He says, and I want you to be in Arucha, the restoration of your mind. By wisdom and revelation of Torah. The res res restoration uh, of your thought process and your heart. Uh, he uses the word arukha. Arukha. You may be restored by the mape, the healing, uh, the great strength uh, of Yas Ruach through this living word, Yisraya. There is no power of healing uh, but by the living Torah. We can holler, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. It means nothing unless there is uh, Imuna, the Imun of Yah. And we know that we love Yah by keeping what He commands us to do. If we don't obey Him, there is no love for Yah. You can talk all you want to, there is no love for Almighty Yah. He said, I hope that you will be in Mape or in this Arucha. And he tells them where it begins, even as your nefesh, the breath, the life, that the substance of man consists of. Your nefesh, it is the life, it is the life-bearing substance of one. Your words, they are spirit, they are life. There's power of life and death in the tongue. He says, even as your nefesh, even as the life 
of the testimony of Yoshua rise in your bosom with great power. As you can see the correlation of our forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob, in the witness of this living Torah that rises from your bosom, from the life. Your life is Torah. Your life is the living Torah. Your life is Yoshua. Your life is by the power of Ruach, by the breath and the life of Yah. I want you to prosper. I want you to shelach. I want you to advance. I want you to be restored. I want the Arucha of Yah to rest upon you. Even even as you prosper in the ways of Yah, as you advance in the wisdom, as you advance in the understanding, as you advance in the knowledge, as you advance in the fear of Yah, as you advance in the Ruach HaKodesh, we must advance there. And the way we began to advance there is by hearing what the Torah of Yah says. If we don't take it to heart, we will never advance, Yisra'ya. We will never shalach. We will never proceed. We will never prosper in the ways of Yah. That's why I began this. Uh, that every kind of social endeavor, they will gather, they will sit, and they will talk of the issues. Yet an irreligious people that we are, we will not talk about those things uh, that impede us, that uh, circumvent us, that destroys us. So by that our nefesh is not prospering. And so we don't walk in the kind of health is vital to us. We're sick. Our bodies are betraying us. We can't get upset if someone speaks to that ill. We get upset. In the Alcohol Anonymous meeting, the one that has been a drunkard for 30 years, he cries. Because he is of people the same like passion, have the same issues of life. And we all have the same confronting battles. The battle is not Yisra'ya, it belongs to Yah. That's why we need a living Torah in us to fight this opposition. And it began first of all with the carnal mind which is enmity against Torah. It is not subject unto the Torah of Yah. It will never be, neither indeed can it be. Because it lusts against the Torah of Almighty Yah. That's what it does. It has no fervent fire of delight in Torah Yisrael. He said, I would above all things that you may prosper, Sherlock, and be in the excellent of health, even as your life presents the very beauty of the testimony of Yeshua. Hamashiach. We will never advance unless we lay out the strategy. A corporation does not advance unless it has those that are the same like-mindedness and they discuss the very strategic plan of the corporation and the stages of advancement. We must see where we have advanced from. That's why when we see one that is complete we must mark that achot, that ak, and see if that one exemplifies the beauty of sholem, sholom, that there's a covenant of peace. They make peace with the ach, the achim, the achot, the achim. We must begin to do that. And if we're not prospering, no one will see that Yisrael. There's a wise speech by the volume of the mouth of Shudrai. Read this in our zakim. We'll come. We need to pray for those that are ailing today and sick. Bodies, we're getting a little older each day. Although you're young, you're getting a little older. And your body is going to forsake you. And that's why our spiritual body is forsaking us because we're not feeding it right. We're feeding it with all kinds of folly and stupidity. We're not feeding it with truth. That's why you can't speak to a damn fool today. They get angry. They get upset. They think they are wise, and they're not wise. They're wise in their own conceit, in their own folly, and their own wickedness. They're not wise. I see it especially among men, elderly men. They are very immature and simple. They're unlearned. Because a fool will always get offended when you show him his ills. And what little he possesses, he will always. And I'm not going to stop talking like that. I don't care who it is in here 
or who it is out there, I will not stop talking like that. You don't have to look at me today because you're cowardly. And that's what a coward cannot look you in the eye. They're cowards. A coward cannot look you in the eye. They're cowards and they're weak. They're cowards and they're weak. It says this in Shirak. It tells us that the fear of Yah, when we began to operate in the Yari, the reverence of Yah, it tells us that that's a crown of great wisdom. Shirak says, Shirak 118, it's a crown of wisdom. It says, and it makes making shalom and perfect mape. See, when we operate in the fear of Yah, it asa, it creates, it fashions, it forms a perfect shalom. It creates a perfect covenant of shalom with Yisrael. He says, and it calls health to flourish. When we began to walk in the fear of Yah, you began to see the flourishing of our health. What does that imply? We don't fear what we say. We don't fear how we operate. We don't fear what we talk about. We don't fear the accus accusations. We don't fear the presumptuous nature that we operate in. We don't fear that. So when a man fears Yah, when he feel, fears the, the, the truth of Yah's Torah, it shows that he has a crown. He has upon his head a crown of wisdom. He's a wise man. You can always see the crown upon the king, can you not? He has a crown of wisdom and making shalom and perfect health to flourish. So that one has always, or one will always have shalom with this neighbor, with your neighbor. And it calls that to flourish, Yisrael. It says both, both the crown of wisdom and shalom with wonder, both are the gifts of Yah. And it enlarges, see what it does? You will know it enlarges their rejoicing in Almighty Yah. Their breath speaks with volumes of the greatness of our Abba. They show a great excellence of his beauty, of his great love. We need to have this Urukha. We need to be sound in our minds. We have enough deterrence every day to cause us to, to grow unhealthy during the day. It doesn't take but a little bit of cyanide to kill you. It doesn't take but a little leaven to poison your mind and to poison your heart. It doesn't take that much, just a little. You find, out, you find yourself all removed from Almighty Yah. Hear this writing of Shirak. Two verses here and I am going to allow our Zakin to come. He's going to teach to us. He will pray for those that are sick today. That need the healing power of Almighty Yah. He will pray for them. And we will trust Yah's great victory today. He will teach unto us the undeniable Torah of truth. That will cause us to prosper in the ways of Yah. Shirak says to us in the 30th chapter, verse 15, Hear this, Yisra'ya, Shirak. He says, Shalom, the covenant of peace, the covenant of Arukha, the covenant of Mape. He says, Shalom, and he uses the word Chaya, the soundness, the complete, perfect thought. Soundness. It's better than all the gold. To have that, it is greater than all the riches that one can amass. Or one could amass. To have that. To have one's shulim, shulum. To operate in the covenant of soundness and health. And to have the chaya. To have the sound discipline of Torah. It is greater than all gold, Yisraya. And that's what the Torah teach us, soundness. It teaches us how to be complete in every aspect. How to eat, how to live, how to love our neighbors, how to love Yah, how to show our love. It teaches us all of that. Every aspect. 
He says, and a robust body than countless riches. To have a body that is robust, to have a body that is strong, it is greater than all the riches of the land. Arak Daivi there in Indiana, he writes to me the other day. He says, Rayak, I have been teaching what we call the raw food diet. Forty years ago, I was teaching that. And I like what you're saying. It is full of hypocrisy and demonically controlled because God gives us a Torah of health. He tells us how to eat and what to eat, but in moderation. We have seen all of these hybrid ingredients to come into our bodies that cannot be expensed or dispensed. He says, and in those days, there was only about six or seven what we call superfood. And you know, he named one that grows so rapidly around here. It is called lamb's quarter. But this man is older than me and many of you all. He says, Reak, my diet calls me from morning to evening to have this enriched strength. I have super strength and energy that I can work all the day long. So we need to fill our minds with living Torah that we can fight against the opposition of hell and stand strong against the opposition that is you that oppose uh, what is true. We need to do that. There is no wealth better than the Urukha. There's no wealth. There's no riches better than one's health. To one's chaya to be restored. And we can be restored. We can restore our bodies. We can restore our minds. We can restore our hearts. Than, than the health of the body. There's no gladness above joy of the heart. There's nothing that is more rich. There is no gladness that is greater than one to have the arucha, the health of Yah in Yoshua HaMashiach. There's nothing that is more profound, more pronounced than to have that. So I say this as our Zaking prepares to come. If the world can gather in their conclaves and discuss those things that are valuable and pertinent to them that cause one that has been a drunkard for 30 years to abandon those, uh, uh, those strong powers without any kind of religious activities, we as a nation of Yisrael cannot bother living Torah, confront the ills of death that operates in our hearts, that there is no living power of Yah Zahava, His love in us, that we cannot even see the living power of truth and how truth will make us free from my own individuality and me. How is the truth that break the shackles of your mind and the bondage? It is only truth that you deal honestly and truthfully with you. And if the world can see the wisdom and the wiseness of that, then why is it that we can't see the wisdom and the wiseness of the Torah of Yah? It's because our nefesh has not prospered. We have not been satisfied with the living way. We lack sin. Sin is finished. It brings forth death. We need wise men and women among us. We need beautiful men and women among us. If I cannot treat me right, I cannot treat you right. If I cannot love me, I cannot love you. If I cannot be kind to me and be concerned with me, I will never be concerned with you. And that's what this is about. When you're concerned with you and there's a genuine love for you, you will understand the beauty of that love and you want to share that with everyone. You want to make known the beauty of that uh, yidi, that belovedness, that how you beloved you. When you don't have love, you don't want to, anyone close or anyone connecting with you. You're cold and you're nasty and you're wicked, you're foul. And that's the way we are. I don't take anything back. You all remove everyone out of here that should not be here. I don't give a damn about money or you. I care about young. Let your truth stand. 
A coward cannot look you in the eye because they're cowards. A coward has no strength. They're weak. I'm a strong man. One calls me yesterday and says, uh, you're a soldier. I say, no, ma'am. Not a soldier. One says, you, you are an airy lion. I say, no. You never heard me say that. I said, I am a warrior. She said, that was the next word I was going to use, a warrior. I said, because I have a cause that is greater than me, a love that is greater than me, a truth that I cannot foster or bring forth from this corrupt flesh. I'm a warrior. I'm like the Uriah. Can I say this before I sit down? I thought about Uriah this morning. He had a beautiful wife. She was pretty that even the king's eyes were mesmerized by her. She wasn't dressed loosely and wicked. It was the aura of her beauty. We see beauty, we don't understand what beauty is. Can I say this, Yisraya? I don't say this to promote anything. The world sees us, and they can see something and they see what is not visible to the eyes, and Yahweh will reveal it unto them. I want to tell you a little incident that took place on Thursday. With my Isha and I. We stopped at her fair. She needed some oils, some herbal oil. And as always, always embrace her. She puts her arm in my arm. We walk to the store. And there was this woman, she was a Caucasian, very jubilant, very expressive. She looks at us and she says to us, you're so lovely and so beautiful. Hear this now. I wasn't impressed with that. I was impressed with what she said after that. She began to confess to me her ills. That's what she began to say. And I looked at the woman. She began to express her own ills. She began to say what has been her, the malice and her destructiveness. And I listened to her. I'm like, isn't this amazing? She saw a reflection of something that she didn't have. And she confessed that. We don't want to see what's in our ach and our achot and see what reflects out of us. So it wasn't that she said, you're lovely. That means nothing to me. I'm not caught up in some kind of superficial hyperbole of expressions to make me feel as though I'm something. She said, you got something that I don't have. You'll possess something that I need in my life. And so we should allow the light of his wisdom to shine. With great audacity and boldness of strength, maturity. That even the strangest of the Gentiles and the heathens, when they see us, they speak. Of the great Tifra. The beauty that is beyond superlatives to express and that's the truth, Yisrael. She began to confess. And when she confessed, my Zachin Yarabia, it was one of great delight. There was such a beauty on her countenance. You could look at the woman until she was a professional woman. She had a dealing with people and she dealt with people in some capacity. She dealt with the public. I could tell that I can discern a lot about people. I say this, as our king comes, we need strong men. Without strong men, we have no strength among Yisraya. We need strong men. And the way a man gets strong, he must exercise himself in truth. And he knows that he is exercising himself in truth because he's free from all, uh, of, all of the bondages of the world. He's free, first of all, from himself. He's a man. He's a strong man. He walks strong. He looks strong. 
He has the beauty. He has an aura about him. He's not a child. He doesn't carry a little stupid superficial uh, disposition that when he gets angry, he wears it on his silly face. Damn you, fool. Look who you are. Your boy. Forgive me, young boys, because Abner doesn't act that way. He gets upset with me, and I say, boy, if you don't get that look off your face, yes, sir. If I thump Cleveland head, yes, sir. See, boys don't even act like that. That's not even a human. A dog doesn't do that. A dog doesn't get angry like that. He may bite you, and he'll be the same one that licked. That's a fool. Come on, my Zachin, ya Rabbi, ya, you that. We will pray for you, Zachin, Yeshurans. Ishur, she's having pains. Uh, precious Zachin Shimri. We're going to pray for uh, them and also Ho Abaya, her daughter, I believe, her situation. And we're going to trust Yah for that. I don't want you that are wicked praying. I want prayer warriors, those that love Yah. For we know that Yah hears not the pala, the tefireth of a man that is wicked. It's a man that doesn't see his own damn sins and his wickedness, the callousness of his heart. He's a dog. But he hears the pala, the prayer of those that worship him. When a man becomes so callous and so hardened, he can't hear the Torah of God that speaks to him. He's a damn fool. I don't want to be in the presence of a man like that. I don't care if it's you. You know I love you. May the riches of God rest upon you all. We greet you all in your sure mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, we do Barak Yahweh for all of you that are listening by way of live stream for this beautiful Shabbat. He has given us Yisrael. He has given us his Torah, his word, even from the mouth of Reach Dawid. So I shall continue on that path. I'm not going to change anything, the message that I have for us today, Yisrael. For it, we need to understand. We're in the position we are in because of our own fallacies and our own iniquities and our own sin. It's because we have not made a change. Yes, right, yeah. It's important that we understand that the reason why we are still stuck in the situation and the places that we are in, we have not matured, we have not moved beyond our own feelings, our own flesh our own circumstances, our own ills, our own ways, because we have not made the change. And there must be a change, Israel. We must change. We must stop walking in the will of our own flesh and in the thoughts of our own minds, Israel. We see where it has brought us. We have gone nowhere. We have not progressed. We have not grown stronger in this walk, this direction, this path that we are taking in Yahshua HaMashiach because we have not changed Israel. We must change. We must allow the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh, to have its perfect way. And that way is to eliminate ourselves, anything that has to do with us. And to allow the light of Yahshua HaMashiach to have the preeminence, or it should be the first thing in our lives, Yisrael. Yeah. It must be the first thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Yeah. I do want to begin here in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 35, yes. verse 1, Yisrael. We must learn how to halif, or halif, change. And to make this complete turn around, that we may know and understand what Yahweh is doing in these final days, Israel. Hold with me right there in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 35, verse 1. But I do want to begin reading, as I do many times. I have not done it in a while, to be honest with you, Israel. I want to begin in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. You just hold your place there in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 35. Because this is the salvation or the example of every one of us, our lives, Israel. Being without form, blemished, 
no life, darkness in our lives, upon our face, darkness, distortion. Before the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh entered in. So I do want to begin here in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Just a few verses, Israel. It says that in the beginning, Yahweh, he created the Shemayim and the Olam. And the earth was without form and void. Yes. Many of us, we are still void and without form, Yisrael. Yes. There, the image of Yahshua HaMashiach, it is not made known upon our faces. Yes. Not in our walk. Yes. Not in how we orchestrate our day-to-day -day lives, Yisrael. Yes. We don't see Yahshua HaMashiach abiding in our lives. Without form and void. And it says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Yahweh moved upon the face yes. of the waters. This is where the beginning of life began, Yisrael. The movement of the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh, his words, his breath, yes. being spoken to an Olam, a world mm -hmm. without form, a mind without form, yes. a heart that is void of the understanding. And the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh. This is our circumstance here, Yisrael. Yeah. We must allow the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, his breath, to enter in. Without that, there will be no change in your life. You look back, you find yourself stuck in the same grim and mire that you were years ago. The same expression. The same actions. When we are reproved and we are admonished, instead of breaking down before Almighty Yahweh and searching our lives, we resort to our fleshly actions and our fleshly ways. A man that has experienced this change of Almighty Yahweh does not, does not express himself that way. He do not resort to the weak and the beggarly elements of the flesh, Yisrael Yah. He do not close the door of Almighty Yahweh where he says, House of Yisrael Yah, shoo, turn. You backsliding heifer, you have turned your back upon me, yes. turn at my reproof. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what Yahweh commands us to do. Absolutely. That we may see the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. And Yahweh say, let there be light. Mm -hmm. Let the ore, the light, the life, the high of my presence. And there was light. Do we have the light of Yahshua HaMashiach today, Yisrael? Yah? And Yahweh, he saw that the light, this ore, this life, that it was tough. Mm -hmm. yes. And Yahweh, he divided the light mm -hmm. from the darkness, Yisrael. Yah. There must be a division. Sure there must be a line that is drawn between the high, this light, mm -hmm. and this life of Almighty Yahweh, and the darkness of this flesh, Yisrael. Yah. Does, does, is there any fellowship between light and darkness, Yisrael? Yah? No, there is not. So we must allow the light of Yahshua HaMashiach to change us. That we may walk in the presence and in the beauty of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Those of you that have turned to Bereshit Genesis chapter 35 and verse 1. There's another very important element we must understand with Halif or Halef, this change. It says here, and Yahweh, he said unto Jacob to arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar to the Almighty. That appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Yes. And he says here in verse 2, then Yaakov said unto his household, yes, yes. those that was with him, the servants in the house, the children, the Ishal, the women, everyone that was of his house. He said to all that was with him to put away. Lord. We must put away Yisrael. Yeah. Put away what? Zakain, Yisrael, yeah. yeah. We must put away the works and the deeds of this flesh. Yeah. The lust and the lasciviousness of this flesh. Yeah. The actions and the deeds of this flesh, Yisrael. Yeah. Anything that course the direction and the path of our Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. So he says to them, he says to us today, we have congregated, have we not? Yeah. Are we of the Bayat Yisrael? Yeah. 
Are we not of the lineage of Yaakov, Yisrael? He said to put away the foreign idols, the foreign gods. Those things that do not honor the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Do, do, that do not bring power to his name. That are among you. Those things that are among us. Those things that are within us, Yisrael. And he says to be clean. To purge yourself. All those things that do not please Almighty Yahweh Yisrael, we must purge ourselves. How do we purge ourselves? By the hearing, and not only that, but also obeying the word of Almighty Yahweh. He said, and be clean and holleth. Change your garments. We must change our garments, Yisrael. We're still wearing the same garments we have wore in the world. We try to dress them up. We try to make these garments acceptable in the presence of Almighty Yahweh, but it's not acceptable, Yisrael. We must put off. We must change. We must holler. We must change our garments. We must prepare our minds. We must prepare our lives for the indwelling of the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I think about those that have left, some of us that are still here, through the many years of my childhood and my youth growing up, I see and understand what Yahweh says, even in my own life. Many times throughout Torah concerning even halaf or change of putting off these garments. We have seen those that have not changed since the moment they walked into the bayat or the doors of Teshua community. And it's a shame that we have not progressed. It's a shame that we have not changed. That we have not put off this old man. This old man still tells us what to do. It still rule us. Instead of allowing the man, Yahshua HaMashiach, hallelujah, to rule, to lead, and to guide us, Yisrael. Yeah. So he says here to his house to put off the foreign gods, put off your ways, to make yourself clean, to prepare yourself, and halef, change your garments. And let us arise and take up to Bethel. And we'll make, therefore, an altar, a place that we shall offer unto Yahweh sacrifices. Hallelujah. Unto his name. That we may offer an offering that is pleasing unto him. What have we offered unto Almighty Yahweh on this Shabbat day, Israel? Is it an offering that is pleasing unto him? Have we prepared our lives as an offering unto Almighty Yahweh? He says, who answered me in the day of my distress? It's only Yahweh that has answered us, Israel. It's only Almighty Yahweh that has answered us in the day of our distress. And was with me in the way which I went. In the way that I walked in. What ways are we walking in, Israel? Are we walking in the ways of our flesh? Are we walking... In the ways of lust and concupiscence, greed, anger. Not the anger of Yah, because what that would cause you to do is to walk in the Torah. It would cause you to bring the sword upon your, uh, your hope. No, upon yourself, first of all. We must be the first partakers of the judgment of the Torah, Yisrael. That's what it would cause you to do. He said, you answered me in the day of my distress where I had no place to go, where my brother pursued me to take my life and was with me all the way, whichever I went. And they gave unto Yaakov all the foreign gods. They got rid of all those things which were in their hand. And not only that, but also the earrings which were in their ears. Was that part of the garment? Was that part of the dress? Was well, that one of the things that he said we must uh, strip ourselves of, these garments that we have clothed in, and do not bring honor and represent the power of Almighty Yahweh, which were in their ears, and Yaakov hid them under, it says, hid the oak that was by Session Yisrael. So we must, halak, we must take off, we must put off these old garments, Yisrael. We must allow the garment of praise, the garment of Told I, giving thanks unto Almighty Yahweh. We must be clothed in those garments, Yisrael. 
Let me express this change or this word change that I am talking about today, Yisrael. Yeah. Halaf. It says to pass on. Mm-hmm. We must move on, Yisrael. Yeah. We must leave the old things behind, our old ways, yeah. our old way of thinking, the old way of doing things, Yisrael. Yeah. Yeah. It also means to pass through, to pass by or go through. To grow up, to mature, moving beyond the state or the present state and advancing. To grow up, to change, and to go on. That is to proceed. We're not going anywhere, Israel, if we're just standing in one place marking time. But we must move on. We must seek the, the deeper things. As the old conditions would say, the higher heights, the deeper depths in Yahshua HaMashiach. It also says to pass away. Not only that, but to vanish or pass away quickly, Israel. We must impel this flesh. And it can't be a process that we take in our time. Oh, I'll, I'll work on that. I know that this is my fallacy. I have a problem with that, but I work on that. No, today is the acceptable time of Almighty Yahweh. We must take heed unto the word of Almighty Yahweh. We must impel those things of the flesh today, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And it also says, a change for the better. Don't you know that Yahweh... He wants us to change. He has presented us with the change for the better, Yisrael, for our own tough. Yes. That we, we may walk in the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. And also to show newness. Sure yes. And it, show, it says this example of a tree. If we would just take the example of the trees, even the ones that we have around here. We have many sweet gums. We have oaks. We have the pines, which are evergreens. They stay green all year. But yet you see the passing of the pine needles as they die off. Yeah. Do not they fall, Yisrael? Yeah. Do they fall to the ground? Yes, they decompose. Yeah. They're, they have no use anymore. Yeah. And yet as that old leaf fall, there's a new leaf yeah. that pushes off the old Yisrael. Yeah. So we must allow the Torah, the newness of Yahshua HaMashiach, the light of Almighty Yahweh and His life to push off those old things, Yisrael. Yeah. We should allow these weights that we carry upon our shoulder to fall off our backs, Yisrael. Yeah. It is not tough for us, Yisrael. Yeah. Yes, yes. It holds us back. It keeps us from moving forward, moving closer in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you want to grow, grow closer and to draw closer near unto Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? Yeah. Those of you that are listening, sometimes it seems and it feels that we are cut off from the presence of Almighty Yahweh. But yet Yahweh, He looks upon His Sadiq. Those He has deemed us righteous, He has called us to be righteous, to be a Beth Gula, a peculiar people, Yisrael. But we must move on. There must be a change. When a man changes, whether it's one that was on drugs, being overtaken by alcohol, as we heard express. They go to the clinics, they go to the group gatherings, that they may find reprieval and deliverance, Yisrael. Yeah. That's why we have gathered in the Bay of Yisrael yeah, of Almighty Yahweh today, that we may find his deliverance. But we must confess our faults one unto another. Yeah. Yahweh said, confess your faults, yeah. your sins unto me, Yisrael. Yeah. And I will have mercies. I will have compassion upon you. But we must confess, Israel. There must be a change. There must be an alteration. And we must move on. Hallelujah. Way. I want to move to 2 Hannah in our chapter, chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. Beautiful, beautiful. I do want to read this, Israel. If we do not change, what happens if there's no change? Yes. If we do not move on, if we do not put away the flesh and the things that excite the flesh, Israel. Yes. 
It says in Enoch, 2 Enoch chapter 2, verse 1. We must, it says to examine, call all the activities which takes place in the sky and how they do not alter their ways. They do not change. We see the clouds as they form. They become full, heavy, which produces the rain. And it's a continual process. We see even the sun as it rises, as we see it in the morning, Israel. Those things, they continue what we see in the skies. They have not changed. And he says to examine the luminaries, the stars of the Shemayim. How each one of them, it says, rise and it sets. Each one is systematic. It is time. It is perfect. There's no erosion. They do not elapse, Israel. They do not change. According to itself, respectively, in season. And they do not divert. Do not, they do not change their course. The course that Yahweh have placed them in, that path, they continue, Yisrael. They do not divert from their appointed order. Yahweh, he has appointed order. An order that he has appointed. That he has declared, Yisrael, for us to walk in. For us to continue in. Verse 2. And he says, to look at the old and the earth. And turn in your mind concerning the action which is taking place in her from the beginning until the end. How all the works of Yahweh as being manifest, they do not change. They do not change, Israel. Yahweh, he doesn't change. He says unto the house of Israel, come now, let us reason together. Not after our own likeness or after our own flesh or our way of thinking, but according to his Torah. Those things which he has established. Those things which do not change, Israel. Those things which from the beginning have not changed its course. Hallelujah. And I barak Yahweh for that. Because where would we be today if his Torah, if his Brit Hadassah, if Yahshua HaMashiach and his walk here on the Olam will have changed its course. There will be no hope of deliverance, no Yasha for us today, Israel. Hallelujah. So I barak Almighty Yahweh that he is never changing. Hallelujah. That he is never changing, Israel. And behold the summer and the winter, how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew. Do we behold that? Do we look at the, yeah. what Yahweh has established? Yeah. The clouds, how they are filled mm-hmm. as the dew and the mist even fall upon the old land of Israel. Yeah. Nothing has changed with Almighty Yahweh. Once a man in his lowest state, once we as a people, when we truly change, Will we truly, if I may use this expression, cross the line and not return to the beggarly, beggarly elements of the flesh? We will not change. We will not go back. Once we have this light of Yahshua HaMashiach abiding in us, there will be no desire for us to return to our old ways. There will be no action, Yisra'ya, that we have done in the past or while we were living in flesh or by the will of the flesh, that we should revert or convert back to Yisrael. But we will remain in that place, in that state which Yahweh desires. And we will not divert. We will not change. If we do that, Yisrael, it's because the Torah of Almighty Yahweh has not made that perfect change in our lives. We have not made the change. When we go back, it's because we have not made the change. We have not been committed unto the word of Almighty Yahweh. There's a man I will read, an elderly man, a Zakane, that faced torturings, that he should bow down unto a wicked king. I will get there. Even concerning 
the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and what one should eat, how one should walk. Will this man change his way because of his circumstances, because of his torturings? You will see a man, a Zakain, an elder, one that understood his place. He understood that there are those that are younger. There are those of the same age, the house of Yisrael. And he understood that he must make a stand. That those that even come after him will see that the power of Almighty Yahweh never changes. And that there is a man that shall not never change. He was concrete in his walk and in his belief and his understanding of the Torah. And not only did he do it for his sake, but also for the sake of those that shall come after him. Hallelujah. Have not Yahshua HaMashiach done that for us? He did not change. He did not go aside out of the path that Yahweh had ordained him. And not only did he do all things to please the Abba, but he also had us. He had you in his heart and in his left. That I must accomplish this to the fullness, that those that come after me may see that they may have an example. We have a place, Yisrael, as being elders in Zakain amongst the house of Yisrael. That we may walk, should walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Enoch chapter 5. Verse 1, continuing in Enoch. Enoch 5, chapter 5. Verse 1. Concerning this never changing of Almighty Yahweh. He says here to observe how the verdant trees are covered with leaves and they bear fruit. Pay attention concerning to all things And know in that manner that he has fashioned them. All of them belong unto him who lives forever. His work proceeds and progresses from year to year. And all his work, they do prosper. And they obey him. And it does not change. It do not halef. It do not change Israel. Everything functions in the way in which Yahweh has ordered it. Verse 3, look at the seas. They do not part. They do not part, Yisrael. And they fulfill all of their duties. And look what it says here in verse 4. But as for you, who is he talking to? Is he talking to us, Yisrael? He is talking to me this day. He said, as for you, have not been long-suffering, and you have not done the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. We have not endured. Over time, we have fallen short, Yisrael, of the praises of Almighty Yahweh. We have changed out of the course that Yahweh has intended us for walk, to walk in. And we have not done the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. But you have transgressed and spoken slanderously. Grave and harsh words with your impure mouths against his greatness. Have we not opened our mouth and blasphemy unto Almighty Yahweh? We have been set aside or we have set ourselves aside out of his way, Yisrael. And out of these filthy mouths, out of these hearts, of flesh that do not magnify the presence and the tongue of Almighty Yahweh. Impure things have come out of our mouths against him, Yisrael. He says, oh, you hard-hearted, may you not find shalom. We shall not find shalom, Yisrael, if we walk in this state of mind, in this state of heart. If we do not make this change that Yahweh commands us through Torah, to put aside every weight and the sin. Also, as Yaakov proclaimed in his household, to put away the gods, Yisrael, yeah. we will continue in this path. Yeah. Our hearts being hardened towards the Torah of Almighty Yahweh as it's being preached, his reproof. Yeah. Is that not part of his Torah? Yeah. Reproof and instruction, yeah. the light of life, Yisrael. Yeah. Yet we despise it. Yeah. Yeah. We set it aside. 
We have another way and another path that we seek besides the way and the path, the direction that Yahweh intends for us to walk in. He says here in verse 4, Therefore, you shall curse your days, and the years of your life shall perish and multiply in internal ex excreation, or it shall expire, it shall die, Israel. And there will not be any more mercies that shall be given unto you. Yeah. I need the mercies of Almighty Yah. Yes, I, yeah. I need the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. Yeah. I don't want to continue in a path that is not pleasing unto him. So we must change. We must set aside those things that so easily beset us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And walk in the light and in the life of Almighty Yahweh. Move with me, turn with me. Hallelujah. To Eob. Chapter 14. Even Eob, in his agonies, his pains, his suffering, his trial, he understood that there there was a change that must take place. Even passing from this fleshly state, Yisrael. Don't you want to be changed today, Yisrael? Yeah. Don't you want to move beyond our present state where we are yeah. in the flesh? Yeah. That we may walk in the fullness of the light of Almighty Yahweh. I want that change. Hallelujah. It says in Eob chapter 14, verse 1. It says that the son of man, of Adam, that is born of a woman, is a few days, of a few days full of troubles. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continues not. Shows the weakness of the flesh, Israel. And do you open your eyes upon such a one and bring me into judgment with you? He says here. He says, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Not one. There's nothing clean we can bring out of this flesh, Israel. There's nothing clean that comes out of our action and out of our ways if we do not walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 5. Seeing his days are determined, they're numbered. The number of his months are with you. You have appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Yahweh, he has appointed a deadline. Abound, Israel, that we cannot pass. Verse 6. Turn for him that he may rest yes. till he shall accomplish as a hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree. They're not talking about the trees. Yes. How even when the leaves are falling out of the tree, especially yes. Yes. trees like oak trees, maple trees, they seem dead. Yes. They seem dormant. But yet there is hope, Yisrael. He says, even if it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And we have seen that, Yisrael. Even when we go into the woods, when we're trying to clear away the, what we call underbrush, the trees, we cut them to the ground. And there's a stump left. And what you will find, it really doesn't take long, a week, two weeks, you will see sprouts coming out of that stump. Even though it was cut down, Absolutely. it seemed dead, but yet there was life there, Yisrael. Yeah. That is what he is expressing here. That even though it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water will it bud even at the sin of water, of refreshing, 
of the pouring down of the Ruach Yisrael. Even though it seems like our lives, they have no meaning. That we have been cut down. That we have been made only to die. Yet there is life and there is hope in Yahshua HaMashiach. We shall allow the water and the raining of his Ruach Yisrael to fill us till we won't no more. Why? Because there is hope. There is life in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yet through even the scent of water will it bud and bring forth branches like a plant. But the Gerber valiant warrior, he dies and he wastes away. Yes, the sons of man give up their nephesh, they give up their souls. They understand that there is something beyond this life to protect and to defend for Yisrael. We need to be a people that are willing to give up our souls, to give up our nephesh, our life, for the Torah and for the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. Have we reached that point, Yisrael? When we are truly changed, we, we have faced, we have truly halah, taken off these garments of flesh and put on the garment of the Ruah, we'll be willing to give up our lives. We'll be willing to even die for what we have believed in, the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. Have we died out to our flesh, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will find a man, a Sadiq man, a righteous man that stands on the Torah of Almighty Yahweh with this one strong virtue that he is not afraid to give up his life for the Torah, for the Mishnah, to lay it down. His thoughts, the lust of his heart, ambitions. What ambitions do we have but to live for Almighty Yahweh? What other reason is there to live, Yisrael? but to walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, to please him in all that we do. There's no other reason to live. No other reason, Yisrael. The sons of Adam give up their nephesh, as it were, is he. Verse 11. As the waters go away from the sea, and the flood decays and dries up, so man lies down. So a man lies down, Yisrael, and rises not. Till the Shemayams be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Shoal, that you would keep me secret. You would keep me, Yahweh. Keep us, Abba Yahweh. Hide us. Until your wrath be past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. Don't you hear this plead from Eo? Even though I pass away, Almighty Yahweh, I die this death and this flesh. I want you to hide me, to preserve me, to keep me, to remember me. Verse 14. If a Gerber valiant warrior die, shall he live again? Shall we live again, Yisrael? All the days of my appointed time, he says, will I wait? I will wait patiently. He understood that all his complaining and his murmuring, even as he searched his left, as he questioned Almighty Yahweh, he understand that there was a change. There must be a change. There must be a passing from this present life. The pains, the aches, the hurt, Yisrael. He said, all the days of my appointed life will I wait until my halif or my halaf to my change come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should wait for our changes, right, y'all. Whether there are aches and pains in our physical bodies, in our minds, things that we are experiencing, Israel, right, the hurt, even of this flesh, even that has been ordained of Almighty Yahweh. That we as a people, as a nation, will wait patiently. Even in our nephesh, these very lives that we live, it rests on our patience, Yisrael. So let us be patient, even for the promises of Almighty Yahweh. That he shall fulfill them, Yisrael. So let us, as Yeo proclaim, he said, I will be patient, I will wait until my change come. Till I put off these old garments till I put off this flesh, 
to I have been changed from mortal to immortality. That I passed from this death into the presence, the life, the high of Almighty Yahweh. And he continues in verse 15. He says, you shall call and I will act to you. You will have a desire to work the works of your hands, Almighty Yah. Verse 16. For now you number my steps, and you not watch over my sins. He said, you have numbered my steps. You know my goings, Almighty, Almighty Yahweh, and you know my ways. You know my faults. You know my sins. Should you not watch over them? Should you not judge me? Should you, should, should you not make an account of them? Verse 17. He says, my, trans, my transgressions is sealed up in a bag. Our transgressions just sit up in the bag, Israel. Whether we want to receive that the things we have done to our bodies, they're sealed up. You know they're there. You feel them. You see them. And you show up my iniquity. You make them known unto me, Almighty Yahweh. Why does Yahweh do that, Israel? Don't you know that he is our only refuge? that we may draw closer unto him, that we not seek the ways of man, their chemicals, their drugs, but we should seek Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Verse 18. And surely the mountain falling comes to a knot, and the rock is removed out of its place. The waters where the stones. Don't you know that water wears away the stones? In the rivers? Even though you put your hands in that water and it's gentle, it's soft, there's nothing hard about water. But yet, the movement of that constantly, it even wears away the stones. The edges, rough stones, after a time they will become smooth stones, Israel. He says, as the waters wear the stones, you will wash away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth. Yes. Yahweh, he will wash those things from the dust of this earth. Are we not just dust, Yisrael? Yes. We're just earth. Yes. So Yahweh, through the movement of his Ruach, the waters, they will purge, they will wash away those things, Yisrael. Yes. And he says, and you destroy the hope of mortal man, of this flesh. There's no hope for this flesh, Yisrael. Yes. Yahweh, he destroys that. This flesh, it ebbs, it ebbs away, it decays, it grows weak, Israel. And the rock is moved out of its place, and the waters, verse 20. He says, you prevail continually against him, and he passes. He says, you change. Yes. You change his countenance and send him away. That's what the word of Yah does. It should change our countenance, Israel. Even though there are things that we experience, that we endure, we should allow the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to change our very countenance. Hallelujah. That we show Yahweh the appreciation of what he has done. The years he has given us. Even to the end of all things, Israel. We should barat Yahweh in all things, in every circumstance. A man that has truly been changed that's what he would do. He would not curse Yah. He would not count what Yahweh is doing in his body as foolishness. But he will understand what Yahweh is doing in these last hours. Hallelujah. Verse 21 of EO. It says that his sons come to honor. And he knows it not. And they are brought low. But he perceives it not of them. But his flesh... Upon him, it shall have pain. Did you see why Eob said, I will wait patiently? And his nephesh with him, it shall mourn. It shall mourn, Yisrael. We shall long for our change. We shall wait patiently for it, Yisrael. Should it just be a change of this flesh that we long, that we hope for? These pains, Yisrael? It should not only be that. We shall... Uh, we should long for the change of this hardened heart, this way of thinking, the way that we understand Almighty Yahweh. That must be changed, Israel. Hallelujah. 
We must move beyond this old way of thinking and move into the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Isn't Yahweh tough? And his mercies they endure forever, Yisrael. Let us not discount even the trials that we endure and that we go through, Yisrael. For it is to prepare us for the Melchu, for the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. It is to prepare us for this change, to be changed from mortal. I remember that old song singing it as a child. Change from mortal to immortality in the twinkling of an eye. We should not continue in this flesh, Israel. But we shall all be changed. Hallelujah. I want that change, Israel. Hallelujah. I want to move on to Maccabees. Chapter 6, verse 1. I believe it's 4th Maccabees. Hallelujah. Are we willing to fight Israel? Are we willing to stay in the battle? To endure hardness? Not as soldiers, but as warriors. One thing about a warrior, he know that he is being watched by those that fight with him. And he knows that when he lays down his life, that the one after him would even be more willing to lay down his life. And the one after him lay down his life. There's this step, step of strength that is given to one or to a people that is willing to lay down their life for the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. It says here in 4 Maccabees chapter 6 verse 1 concerning Eleazar. It says when Eleazar in this manner had made eloquent response. His words were not mixed. They were straightforward. He was not afraid to speak. He was sure on his foundation on when, where he stood. An eloquent response to the exhortations of the tyrant and the guards who were standing by and dragged him violently to the instrument of torture. An instrument that has been designed to afflict pain and to afflict pain in the most excruciating way. See, even us as a people, when we get the little bit of pain, the first thing we do is look for the aspirin. Look for the Tylenol. We look for the salve. We look for a way to relieve the pains of the body. Scratches, burns. We look to mend them very quickly, Israel. But this is so much beyond that, that we cannot even comprehend even what the very pains that we endure in our own bodies, Israel. It says in verse 2, first they stripped the old man. And it says old man. He was a Zarkain. He was a man of age. He was not a young man full of youth and vitality. He was an old man. An old man by and through his example, he showed unto those the walk that one should walk in the Torah. Not giving up and not laying down. Not giving up to the flesh or even unto the will of others. But standing in the will of Almighty Yah. So they stripped this old man, this Zakain. Who remained ordained with the power of his meekness. So yet, yet even though they stripped him of his clothes, yet there was a covering that they could not see that he was covered in. That even though his nakedness was exposed, yet they could not expose that very thing which Yahweh has put in his left. Yahweh is not going to allow the world to strip us bare, Yisrael, of the beauty and the excellence of his Torah that he has placed on our lives, Yisrael. He's not going to allow the, the enemy to do that, Yisrael. To take his Torah or to rape that thing, take that thing violently out of our hearts, Yisrael. He's going to allow Yisrael to hold their chastity for him and for him alone. The world cannot take it away, Yisrael. 
The world can't take the Torah away from you. Hallelujah. So let us stand in the power and the might of Yahshua HaMashiach. And after they had tied his arms, they bound him. Each side, they scourged him. They beat him. They bruised him. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach bound? Was he not scourged, Israel? Was he not beaten? To a point whereby his visions would not even recognize if we did not know him, Israel. Verse 4. While they hurled, while they beat him, they cried out unto him, they opposed him to obey the king's commandment. What, was the, what did the, the king command? Yes, yes. That he would lay down this Torah, this Mishnah that was placed in his lap. That he would partake of the unclean things, yes. the meat, the pork. To serve the gods and the idols. Yes, right, y'all. The world present those things unto us continuously. Sure it does. Yeah, it does, yes, right, y'all. Continuously. Should we bow down? Should we give up the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh? Or should we stand as a warrior? And be one that is willing to lay down even his very life, yes, right, y'all. In verse 5, but he stood courageous. I like that word. And noble to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. As a true Eleazar. It says he was unmoved. And though being tortured, as though being tortured in a dream. Even though the pains, the hurts, the agonies. Because he was in this place of Torah, he had this shalom. He had this presence about even his circumstances, that it was a dream, that it will all pass away. It will all fade away, Yisrael. Let us wait patiently on Alma Yahweh. This, these things which we are experiencing, Yisrael, it's only but for a moment. It shall pass away. This too shall pass. Verse 6. Yet while the old man's eyes were raised to the Shemayim's, our eyes raised, are we looking up, Yisrael? In the midst of our pains and our agonies, do we look up or do we hang our head? Do we seek a pity party? We won't want to be sorrow, sorrowful for us and our circumstances. Well, sorrowful, being sorrowfulness or one being in, in that state, it, it's no good for you. It does not advance you, Yisrael. What will advance you in your circumstances and your pains if you would just look up? Hallelujah. And we would, you would just look to the hills. From which your help and your help cometh from. It cometh from Almighty Yahweh, which has made all things. He has made the Shemayams and the Olam Yisrael. Hallelujah. So even though the pains, they ebb us, let us look up. Our, my back is hurting. Look up. The pains in my leg is unbearable. Look up, Yisrael. The pains of my mind, look up, hallelujah, from where our help and our health cometh from, almighty Yahweh. This old man, this Zakain, knew there was no other place he could look. He had to look up, Yisrael, hallelujah. It said, yet while this Zakain, this old man, his eyes was raised to the Shemayams, even as his flesh was being torn, and scourged from his body, and his blood flowing, and his sides were being cut into pieces. Even through all that, he looked up, Yisrael. This should be the image or the place that every Zakain should strive to be. In this way of thinking, in this place. This Zakain was a man that was truly changed, Israel. He could not bear this if he did not put off those old garments of the flesh. Even though the pains and the agony of it, he did not mind that, Israel. That was not his focus. His focus was obeying the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 7. 
And again, this is a, a Zakain. This is an old man. And though he fell to the ground because of his body, his body could not endure the agonies and the pains. He kept his reason upright and unwavering. He did not sway. He kept the Torah, the Mitzvah of Yahweh, in his love, Yisrael, and he did not give up. Many times we want to give up on Almighty Yahweh because of these aches and these pains, because of doubt, because of circumstances. Our family do not want to go this way. My family, they mock me. They have left me. Hallelujah. But he will never leave you, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh, he will never forsake us, Yisrael. Yeah. But he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Yeah. So this old man, this I can't, he fell upon his knees because his body, his, this physical man, could not endure the agonies. But he kept his reasoning, his reason. His mind did not leave him. His mind was still sharp. The eloquence of his speech was still there. The Torah was still there in his love, Yisrael. It says here in verse 8, even of the cruelty of the guards as they rushed at him and began to kick him in his sides to make him get up after he fell. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, Yisrael? One beaten, scourged, the flesh being ripped out of his body, an old man, not having the strength of a, a young man and his virtue, yet there was a strength beyond even his physical body. He fell to the ground upon his knees, and they sought to kick him that he may get up again. Verse 9, but he bore the pains. What is that? He endured the pains. He embellished the pains. He bore the pains and the scornings and the punishment, and he endured all of the tortures, Israel. What are we willing to endure for Almighty Yahweh? Have we come to this point of change where there is nothing that's a, that should separate us from his Ahava, Yisrael? And like a noble athlete, it's talking about the old man. And like a noble athlete, the old man, while being beaten, he was victorious. He was victorious. And he overcome his torturings. He overcome the pain and the beatings, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh has given us the power in his Torah to do all things in Yahshua HaMashiach to overcome, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. It says in verse 11 that in fact, with his face bathed in sweat and gasping heavily for breath. You know, this is a true account, Israel. This is not from no writing from some novel. It's, a, it's somehow we as a people allow our minds to be taken away in books. Yes. Cowboy accounts, cowboy books, yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. Books that are false. Well, all we have to do is go to the Torah. Yeah. And it's the Torah that gives us strength. Not some fallacy. Yeah. Not some kind of novel, Yisrael. But the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. You will not gain any strength from some kind of lying novel. Or some kind of lying book, Yisrael. But this right here, this will give you strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This will encourage your love to press on. To endure the battle, Yisrael. It says that he was gasping heavily for breath. Even to the point that he amazed even those that tortured him. By his courageous ruach. His rock was courageous. It was valiant. It said even at the point, partly out of pity for his old age and partly out of sympathy, that even though his acquaintance or those that was with him, I mean also and with his acquaintance round about with him, and partly out of even admiration, and this is how those that are torturing him are looking upon him, that they're even having some remorse for him. And even add out of admiration for his endurance. What kind of endurance do we have, Yisrael? We like this. We like this endurance, Yisrael. 
We should want this endurance that we would endure all things for the sake of the Torah. Even the things that we experience in our bodies, even the pains, Israel, y'all. We should not forget Almighty Yahweh, even through all of that. This Zakane did not forget Almighty Yahweh, the Torah, his experiences in life. He did not give it up, Yisrael. And listen what happens as we move on in Maccabees chapter 6, verse 14. They said, Eleazar, why are you so irrationally destroying yourself through these evil things? Why don't you just condescend? Why don't you just give up? Yes. Give up your imunah, your faith, and your hope, yes. and this Torah, and Almighty Yahweh, and everything will be all right. You don't have to endure these beatings. But yet he was willing to endure the beatings. Why? Because he saw something that was beyond even his physical life, that old body, the pains that he was experiencing in Israel. Verse 15. He said, we will set before you some cooked meat, the pork. And he, they said, out of their pity for him, save yourself and, and pretending to eat it. They said, just bite it, chew it. You can spit it out. You don't have to swallow it. And we will make a false report to the king that you condescended. They felt remorse for him. They felt, they felt some kind of sympathy, even in their wickedness, Israel, beating this man to this point. But yet, look what he did. Did he give in? Did he give up? But Eleazar, as though more bitterly tormented, listen to this now, by this counsel. By this counsel. Through the whippings, the scourging, the yeah. kicking, and all that he endured. It was even more bitter for him to hear this counsel yeah. that was counseling him to transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, to go back on his promises unto Almighty Yahweh, and to go back in, even on the promises of Almighty Yahweh. So he was bitterly tormented even by this counsel, and he cried out. Yeah. Do we cry out, Yisrael? Yeah. Against the counsel of the wickedness of our own mind? Of our own heart. Yes. You know, that even our mind seek to bring us into captivity, to be tortured, Yisrael, even our own mind, to the point where we are even willing to give up the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. What? To experience pleasure of the flesh for a moment, for a season, yes. to accept the camaraderie of others, Yisraya, that the Torah means so little to us, hallelujah, it should mean even more than our lives. And Eliezer, this old man, this Zakain, he understood that, Yisraya. 17. Now remember, he cried out in verse 16. May we, the children of Abraham, never think so basely that out of paradise. We refrain a role yes. unbecoming unto us. He said, we are of the scene of Abram. We have a moon now. We have the strength yes. of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. We will not be brought to this low point as being called cowards. To refrain from even the Torah of Almighty Yahweh yes. and to do what you have acquired me to accomplish. Verse 18. For it would be irrational if we, who have lived in accordance to the truth, even to this old age, have maintained according with the Torah this reputation of such a life. He said we have walked in the Torah. We have not negated the words of Almighty Yahweh. Every word we have walked in. You tell me that you're asking me to throw all this away? I'm an old man. I have experienced the Torah. I have experienced the presence of Almighty Yahweh. He said, should now our curse become a pattern of impiety, even unto the young? He said, if I do this thing, this cursed thing, would not it even bring a... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? A, a recompense of wicked reward even to our young? That's all right, 
by doing this thing, by following this, what you have commanded me to do, transgressing the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He said it would become a pattern, even unto the young. This old man knew by standing in the Torah that he showed a pattern of one that stands strong, that abides in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He wasn't even going to give that up. Hallelujah. And becoming an example and eating of this defiled food. He said it would be shameful if we would survive, but for a little while, and during that time, we'd be a laughingstock to all for our cowardice or our cowardness, Israel. But you know that if we would give up, even in the middle of our circumstances, our trials, when those that mock us, our families, what we so-called friends in the world, because they see this change and we have made this change, and we're not willing to go back. Don't you know that even if you do step aside out of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and you turn, that they will mock you? All your labor, and it's Zakeh, he knew that all of my labors, the example I have set before the house of Israel, it will go to waste, and you will still yet mock me. The world will still mock us, Israel. Let us stand in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Let us not give up. Hallelujah. And if we should despise by the tyrant as unmanly and not protect Yahweh's Torah even unto the death. We should protect Yahweh's Torah even unto the death, Yisrael. Therefore, O children of Abraham, he, now he's crying this now, he's shouting this out. Die nobly for your imuna, for your faith. He's encouraging them. I can imagine their faces when... Now, there were others around that saw this. And by the beatings, they were hoping that this old man would give up, that everyone else would give up. But this old man, he stood assured. That's what we should do as I came. You that are as I came, that are even elder than I, that's what you should do. When one is truly changed, that's what one would do. He would be an example unto the young, unto the house of Israel, as being one that stands in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We need these examples in the house today. Where are they? As we hear the question asked so many times. Where are the Zarkain? Where are those that are willing to give up their life? Those that are willing to be an example for us that are young. To show one that is willing to even die as a warrior for this cause of Yahshua HaMashiach. I need that in my life, Israel. I need it. Hallelujah. I need those that have gone on before me that have faced this experience to show me the path that I should walk. Hallelujah. We need that this hour, Israel. So he is crying out. He said, and if we should despise, in verse 21, if we should be despised by this turret as unmanly and not protect Yahweh's Torah even unto death. Therefore, O children of Abraham, die nobly for your imunah, for your faith. And you Guard of the tyrant. He said, why do you delay? He said, why did you stop beating me? Why are you not continuing in, the to in this torture? I am not unmoved. I am unmovable in this in standing with the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He's telling them to keep on. Keep on beating me. Keep on mocking me. Why? Because I would not give up. I would not give up my muda. He said, why do you delay? And when they saw that he was so courageous in the face of even the afflictions and that he had not been changed by their compassion. He did not let their compassion change him or convince him to give up this Amun out of the faith of the Torah. He was not changed by their compassion. The guards Brought him even unto the fire. We want to get to that point, Israel. We need to get to the fire. We should allow even now the fire and the judgment of Almighty Yahweh to purge us, to cleanse us, and to prepare us even 
for this very account, Yisraya. So why should we let the afflictions of our body, the pains of this physical body, which only lasts for a season, Yisraya, it should not be forever. As our art y'all co said on, Sh on Shema Yisraya last night, that the pains are not even worthy to be compared with the things that Yahweh has prepared for us if we will endure, if we will stand, and if we will overcome. Verse 25. There they burn him with maliciously contrived instruments, instruments that were put into the fire to hold the heat, and it was pricking him, his body with it. It said they threw him down and they poured even stinking liquids into his nostril. This is torture, beyond torture, Israel. When he was now burnt to his very bones and about to expire, he was about to give up his life. He lifted up his eyes unto Yahweh. Hallelujah. He lifted up his eyes unto Yahweh, Israel. And he said, you know, O oh, Yahweh. I want to be able to say this, Israel. I want to get to this point. I want to be a warrior of this nature. He said, you know, you Yada, O oh, Yahweh, that, that though I might have saved myself, I am dying in burning torments for the sake of the Torah. He said, you know this, Almighty Yahweh. That I endure for the sake of the Torah. I endure for the sake that your word may be manifest in Israel. Those that are watching, those that are torturing me, that your words may be known, Almighty Yahweh. And he says to be merciful unto your people. And let our punishments suffice for them. Let it be enough. Let it be sufficient. He said, make my blood their purification. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Yahshua HaMashiach to me. For his endurance on the state, being beaten, ridiculed, mocked, the flesh being torn from his body. Yes. Yeah, he cried unto Yahweh to not lay this sin upon the people. He said, let my blood be their purification and take my life in exchange for theirs. Don't you know Yahshua HaMashiach? He given his life in exchange for ours, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We should lay down our life. Why would we not want to make this change? Why would we not want to set aside this flesh and the garments of this flesh for Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? He did it for us. That we may be acceptable in his presence. He did it for us, Yisrael. Verse 30. And after he said this, the Kodesh man died nobly in his torture. And by reason, he resisted even unto the very tortures of death for the sake of the Torah. Hallelujah. That was a Zakane. That was a man that was truly changed. He put off the garments. He set aside the flesh. The pains did not cause him to even question Almighty Yahweh, but it gave him even more of a resolve to stand for the Torah. Hallelujah. Let us stand for the Torah, Yisrael. Let us not give up or lay down the Samuna that has been given unto us through Yahshua HaMashiach. Let not his death or the resurrection of life be something that is not meaningful to us, Yisrael. Something that we should just throw aside. But it should be our life. This is what we should live for. I want to be able to endure hardness as a warrior and give up this life. Hallelujah. Give up even this very life. The affections of my flesh, there are affections. There are lusts. But through the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, I am able through him to impel those things daily. This old man allowed his flesh to be impaled. Yeah. Yahshua was impaled. Hallelujah. For what? Yeah. To stand on the very Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Where do we stand today? Search your love, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Search our hearts. Is this message needed today? Surely it is. Even though there are you that are in pain, that are sick today, it is needed. Why? That we may understand that we should endure. Hallelujah. Let us endure the pains and the suffering just for a time, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Why? Because Yahweh, he has something in store for each and every one of you. And it is yours and for you only. It's for you. Hallelujah. And he has preserved it for you, Yisrael. Let us endure, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to begin reading at verse 41. Hallelujah. We need to make this change. We need to hull off Israel. We need to put off the deeds and the lusts and the affections of this flesh. For the Torah. That we give up everything. For Almighty Yahweh. It says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 41. That there is one splendor of the sun, and another splendor of the moon, and another splendor of the stars. For one star, it differs from another star in splendor. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in the splinter and in the honor of Almighty Yahweh. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. Hallelujah. Of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living nephesh. There was a change. A putting off of the old Adam, or the old man, or this old flesh. And the last man, or the last Adam, was made a quickening ruach. We need this quickening ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach. We need the quickening of the ruach of Almighty, Yah- of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael. How be it that this was not first, which was spiritual, which was of the Ruach. It was a man of flesh. That was the first man, the one that was made of flesh and not of the Ruach, but was natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Verse 47. For the first man of the Olam of the earth was earthly, and the second man is Yahshua HaMashiach. From the Shemayim. It was made of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Of the breath of Almighty Yahweh. This is the change we should seek. And this is the change that we need. Yisraya. As this. As is the earthly. Such are they. That are earthly. And as. Those things that are of the Shemayim. Such are they. That are of the Shemayim, Yisrael. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, yes. so shall we also bear the image of the things which are of the Shemayim. Yes. Hallelujah. Through Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. It says in verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood it cannot inherit the kingdom, the Melchu of Almighty Yahweh. It must die. It must be impaled. There must be a change, Israel. Should we wait at the death of this old body to seek or to desire this change? No. There also should be a change here in the mind and in the heart of Israel. There should be a death even of the thoughts and of the intense of the heart, Yisrael, because the heart of this body, of this man, it is wicked, continuously. It do not understand or loathe or desire the things of Almighty Yahweh. That man should die. Those thoughts should be impaled. Why? That the life and the high of Almighty Yahweh 
should live. That we should walk in the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh. Even now. We don't have to wait, or we should not wait until just the passing of this body. But this should be an experience that we have now, Israel. We should have the mind of Yahshua now. This change should take place now, Israel. We should not wait. We should allow the Torah, the Mishra of Yahweh, to have its perfect work. Hallelujah. That's right. Even in this very mind, in this very body, Israel. Yeah. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh, should not, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the Melchu, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Should we, in the corruption of our minds and in the, in the corruption of our thoughts, inherit incorruption? Or the life of the high of Yahweh? No. It does not work that way, Israel. Verse 51. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep, Israel. Even now. We should have experienced this resurrection or this change already, Israel. In our hearts and in our minds. He says, in a, he says Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be halak. We should put off this old mind, this old way of thinking. We should put off or impel this flesh. And be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Can that be measured? I don't believe that can even be measured by the instrument of man. It cannot be measured, Yisrael. It's going to be so quick. The work of Yahweh, it is quick. It is instant. When Yahweh changed the level of a man, it is quick and it is instant, Yisrael. Yeah. Yeah. To divert back unto that fleshly state again? No. Hallelujah. Once a man is truly changed, he cannot go back. Hallelujah. This Zakane that I had read that experienced this torture, he knew that he could not go back. Hallelujah. 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 But he pressed on, even to the end of his life, Yisrael. Yeah. And even at the end of that life, he received eternal life. At the end of that mortal flesh, he received immortality. Hallelujah. In the moment, in the twinkling of, a lie, of an eye, at the last so far. Are we still waiting for that last so far? Hallelujah. Have not Yahshua HaMashiach, has he not sound the warning? Yisrael? Then what are we waiting for? What change are we waiting for, Yisrael? He says... For the shofar shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be halach. We should be changed. Hallelujah. We should be changed, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Way. It continues in verse 53. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. It must, Yisrael. We must continue in this path of life, no matter what it offers unto us, which is really very little. Pains, agony, hurt, separation, loneliness, all those things just right, y'all. But yet, if we would continue to walk in the Torah and in Mishnah and change, allow the Torah and Yahweh's right to change us whole and completely, Israel, y'all. We will understand what Yahweh is doing in his last and final hours. And we will be more, and will, more willing to endure our present circumstance, Israel, for him, for the cause of the Torah. It says in 54, So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying which is written, Death is swallowed up. And Teshua and victory. Hallelujah. We should await for that death, Yisrael. We should impel even our bodies daily. It should die daily. That the life of Yahshua HaMashiach may show himself victorious in us, Yisrael. Verse 55. And we can say this even now. Why? Because Yahshua HaMashiach had made this possible for us. We can say this with an insurance, not falsely, Israel, right here in verse 55. Oh, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. 
Should we allow the pains of this body to steer us after this, off of this course that Yahweh had laid for us? This is a course Yahweh have laid for each and every one of us, Yisrael Yah. And we must endure it. Hallelujah. We must go all the way to the end. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, sting, oh the sting of death, it is sin, Yisrael Yah. It is sin. And the strength of sin is the Torah. It's the Torah, Yisrael Yah. It's the Torah that shows us the things which are acceptable, those things which are not acceptable for Almighty Yahweh. It instructs us. It reveals unto us what is pleasing unto Almighty Yahweh. But the free unmerited pardon be unto Almighty Yahweh, which gives us the victory through Yahshua HaMashiach. Therefore, my brethren, be you steadfast. We must be steadfast. Was not that Zakana old man that I read about? Yes. Was he not steadfast, Israel? Yes. We must be steadfast. When we have reached that change, and we reach that change in its fullness, we will be steadfast. There's nothing that could turn us around. And we find ourselves flipping and flopping. Yes. We're here, we're there, yes. we have confidence, we doubt Yah, yes. that we have not experienced this change Amen. that I am speaking about today, Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. So we must make this change. Now, right now is the acceptable time of Almighty Yahweh. He says to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Almighty Yahweh. For as much as you know that your labor, that old man labored in his torture. Our labor in this present time, the labor we experience in our body is right, Yah. It is not in vain. As long as we are in, it says here, Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So your experiences, Yisrael, are those that you're listening, your pains, your agonies. It is not in vain. If we abide in Yahshua HaMashiach, if we endure hardness as a warrior and a valiant warrior, there is a great reward that waits for all of us, if I may use this expression, as the old condition would say, on the other side. Hallelujah. That change. Eo, he waited for that change. We should await the change, Israel. To be changed even from this mortal body of flesh, even to immortality, Israel. And we must understand, even if we die in Yahshua HaMashiach, it is a beautiful thing. The death of one that is Sadiq. Why? Because there are treasures that waits for that one. There are promises that wait for that one if we would just endure Yisraeli. Turn with me to Galatians. Galuthia, Galatians chapter 3, verse 20 through 29. I do want to read Yisraeli as I prepare to bring this message to a close today. Let us endure. Let us be those that overcome. Let us make that change today, Yisraeli, that is so important. That we stand in the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. That we become as a pillar unmovable and abiding in the Torah. Galatians chapter 3 verse 20. It says now a mediator. He is not a mediator of one. But Yahshua, he is one. Yahshua is our mediator. He stands for us, Israel. He stands in the gap for us. This is the Torah. Is the Torah then against the promises of Yahweh? Yahweh forbid. For if there had been a Torah given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the Torah. But the scripture has concluded under all sin that the promise by Imuna of Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, might be given to them that believe. That's what the promises are given to us that believe, Yisrael. Yeah, yeah. But before faith came, we were kept under the Torah, shut up to faith, which should be afterwards, should afterwards be revealed. Verse 24. Wherefore the Torah was our schoolmaster, 
to bring us to Yahshua HaMashiach, that we might be justified by Imuna. But after that faith had come, we are no longer under this schoolmaster or under that Torah. For you are all children of Yahweh by Imuna and Yahshua HaMashiach. For as many of you have been baptized into Yahshua HaMashiach, put on Yahshua Messiah. There is neither Yahuda nor those of the Goim or Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you all are Eka. We all are one in Yahshua HaMashiach. And if you be in Yahshua HaMashiach, then you are Abram's Zerah, seed, and heirs according to the promise. What is that promise? That promise of eternal life. That promise that we should abide in the presence of Yahweh forever. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. I won't be in the presence of Almighty Yahweh forever, Yisrael. But there must be a change. We must put off the old things. Yeah. We must impel the flesh daily, Yisrael. Yeah. And we must carry this amuna and hold on to this amuna. We must fight for it, Yisrael. Yeah. Because it's, it's only given unto us that hold on to that, the promises of Almighty Yahweh. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, he's talking to us, Yisrael, as he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and in sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. This is speaking unto us, Yisrael. It's speaking unto us that have changed. We have moved on. We moved past the flesh, Yisrael. According to the price of prince of the power of the air, the Ruach that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also all had our conversations in time past and the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But Yahweh who is rich in mercy, for he is great in Ahava. He is great in love, Yisraeli. Wherewith he has loved us. We are his beloved. We are those he has chosen, Yisraeli. He has laid, he has set his Hava upon us. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, before we had made this, trans, this, this change, but when we were dead in sin, he has quickened us together with Yahshua HaMashiach by his free unmerited pardon. Yes. You are delivered. Hallelujah. You are saved. You are Yashak. And has raised us up together and made us to sit in high places, yes. in heavenly places, in Yahshua HaMashiach. That in the ages to come, he might show the excellence of his riches and his free unmerited pardon and his kindness towards us through Yahshua HaMashiach. For by the free unmerited pardon are you delivered through Imunah. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of Almighty Yahweh. I brought Yahweh for this gift of Imunah. It is by the moonlight that I'm able to face every day. The lust that are presented every day, I'm able to face it and be victorious over it. The pain I may endure day by day, I'm able to face it and be victorious through this moon that Yahweh has given. It says, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Yahshua HaMashiach to tough works. It says to tough works. So we should, should we continue to do things that are not tough, that are after the flesh? No. 
Why? Because we have been changed. To tough works, which are in Yahweh, has before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised, by which is called the circumcision of the flesh by man's hands. That at that time you were without Yahshua, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the common covenant of promise, having no hope. We're without hope, Yisrael. And without Yahweh in this world. But now Yahweh, through Yahshua HaMashiach, you have sometimes were afar off or may nigh unto the blood or by the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. For he is our shalom. He is our shalom today, Israel. Yes. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall or partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh enmity, yes. even the Torah of the commandments, that could, which the Torah of the commandments contain in ordinances, for to make himself of two, one new man, so making shalom. So we are Ekad. We're no longer twain, Israel. We are one. And that he might reconcile both to Yahweh in one body by the stake, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached shalom unto you, which were far off, and to them which were nigh. And through him, through Yahshua HaMashiach, we both have access to the Ruach, or to the presence of our Abba, Almighty Yahweh. Now therefore, we are no longer strangers and forejourners, but fellow citizens with the condition of the household of Almighty Yahweh and are built upon the foundation of the Nabi, Yahshua HaMashiach himself, he is our foundation, which is the chief cornerstone, and whom all the building, fitfully framed together, grows to a Kodesh tabernacle in Yahshua HaMashiach, and whom you also are built together for a habitation of Almighty Yahweh through the Ruach. We have been changed, Israel. You know, we're no longer our own, but we have been paid for by the stake, by the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. To be a people that are a Beth Gula, a peculiar people, not like the people of the world. There should be a vast difference. The world should look at us and wonder with intrigue and with questions, Israel. Why? Because they see a people that is not like them. They see a man that has a change. Isn't that something that Obama, our current president, that was one of his themes, speeches, change. Change for the people, for the middle class, for the poor, for the nations, for the tub. Change, change, change. Did change come? No, there's no change. There's no change. The nation continued on the same course that Yahweh has ordained to go in, or nations to attend, or to go in, and that is to destruction. Hallelujah. But we are those that have experienced the change, the real change. Why? Because we have put off these old garments. Let us put off these old garments, Israel, and be clothed with the garments, the light of Yahshua HaMashiach, and the testimony of Almighty Yah. What is that testimony? That he never changes? He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That even though he has spoke that what we put upon these bodies, that we should reap them. Is that not a promise? Do we not experience that? That promise is just as powerful and just as real as the other promises he has given us. If we will continue in the Amunah, Yisrael, if we don't give up, if we don't give in, those very same promises are just as important. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, Israel. 
We do Barak, you all that listen to my VIV live stream. I pray that you have been encouraged, Israel. We need encouragement in this hour. We need those that will stand on the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that will be our examples. That no matter, as Okadush would say, hell or high water, they will endure. And they will stand the course of time. Hallelujah. At this time, we do want to remember all of you, Yisraya, that are in pain or in afflictions. Whether it's affliction of your body, whether it's a mental state, Yisraya, doubts, fears. Hallelujah. Those things, they are not of Almighty Yahweh. The doubt. We should believe on whom we have imuna in. Faith in the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. He has brought us this far by Imunah, by faith, Yisrael. Has he brought us to this point of our life to just leave us right here? No. That we may continue, Yisrael, and press closer and get closer to the Melkut, to the kingdom and to his presence. Hallelujah. I do want to pray at this time for call the house of Yisrael, those of you that are scattered, those that are listening. And those that do not have the means to listen tonight. That's one thing about the rule of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. It is not disabled by airwaves. Yes. Or because one do not hear this message tonight. It is alive. And it goes forth. And it accomplishes that which it has, sent, has been sent forth to accomplish, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh has given us beautiful Shabbat. Every day is beautiful, Yisrael. For he has given us life. He has caused our eyes to be open this day. He has given us the means to hear. Hallelujah. The means to barak him for all things. Let us shoe turn unto Jerusalem. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you for this beautiful day you have given us, for the breath and the life that you have given only unto the house of Yisrael through your misfire and through your Torah. We do bring those before you on this day, Abba Yahweh, that are ailing in the bodies, that are sick, those that are weak, Abba Yahweh, that you will continue to send, that you will send your bomb of Gilead, your Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach to heal, to make whole, to redeem your Almighty Yahweh, to redeem Israel. Even in our present state, Abba Yahweh, that you will fill us, Abba Yahweh, and that you will give us Reassurance, Abba Yahweh, of your Torah and your promises that you have spoken, that you have written, Abba Yahweh, and that you have swore by no higher but even your own self, Abba Yahweh. That if we would, as a people, would just believe, if we would just lay down this flesh and impel it, Abba Yahweh, that you would do and perform the things that you have promised unto the house if we would just believe. So strengthen us, Abba Yahweh. Continue to teach us. Continue to instruct us, Abba Yahweh, that we will grow strong in the Ruach HaKadosh and in your Torah. So we pray for all Kol Yisrael that you will make us whole on this day, Abba Yahweh. That you will complete us. Hallelujah. That you will bring us up, Abba Yahweh, to that place that you desire us to be. And in all things, Yahweh, we cease not to give you toda, for we give you toda in all things. Hallelujah. We do not charge you foolishly for what you have done and what you are doing, Abba Yahweh. We just desire, Abba Yahweh, that you will strengthen us, that we may continue, that we may abide in your Torah, and that we may, may not give up and that we not stop, Abba Yahweh. For you are our life, you are our health, and you are our strength, Abba Yahweh. So we told our you, we barak you even for now. Right now, Yahweh, we give you told out for all things. Hallelujah. For the double Yahshua HaMashiach. For your election, Abba Yahweh. And for your imuna that you have given unto us. It's not by our own strength, Yahweh, but it's by your strength. Why? Because we are a people that are weak. We are not able, Yahweh, to accomplish these feats on our own. But you have given us the strength. You have said for us to proclaim 
Even though we are weak, we are strong. We have been made strong in Yahshua HaMashiach and by your Torah. So we stand on that rock today. We stand on your Torah, your Mitzvah today, Yahweh. That we not be moved. Hallelujah. So in all things we give you told out. And we will rock you, Yahweh. And the precious and mighty, the most beautiful name of Yahshua HaMashiach by which we are made refa, we are made whole, your healing. We do pray this day for all Israel. And we do by appliance, Abba Yahweh. We all say, hallelujah, 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah. Shalom, Yisrael. Shalom, hallelujah.